Hey guys, how you all doing? I'm Rahul and today we're going to be having a look at configs within CSGO and how you can create the perfect one for yourself. Now the config within uh, CS will hold pretty much all the um, information, all the settings you can change within the game. So like keybinds, your view model, res, sensitivity, all that cool stuff. It holds it all. And um, you can save and use different ones for different occasions. So you can use like a, one with a lower res and like different view models for when you're playing because you like it. That's how it looks when you play. But then when you want to record, say you've got your GoTV demo you want to record or your POV, um, you can change the config to make it look different and whatnot and it'll be easier for you. Now if you are not like supreme or global or you don't have like a lot of hours on the game then it's quite likely that you haven't tried out all the different types of like combinations for your config so um, you, you might not have find the, found the perfect one for you. So in this video I'll just be going over all the different things you can be changing, you can try them out, see what works for you, see what doesn't work and then you can create the perfect one for yourself and um, you'll just make your whole gameplay experience that little bit better. I'll also be leaving my own config within the um, description just for anyone out there who wants to use it. So let's start off with the video settings. Now in the video settings the main thing you're going to be looking at is the res quality settings such as like shaders and whatnot. You can change but that's really up for you to try out for yourself, see what works, see what doesn't. They're mainly to do with like changing your FPS and stuff. Uh, you, you can change them about to see what works for you. Now there are three types of um, res. You can play 4x3, 16x9 or 16x10. That's like the ratios. Now 16x9 is um what like normal monitors nowadays will be playing and this is basically anything in this category will look normal for you 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 probably want to be going for the highest quality you can so for me it's going to be 1080p if i went higher than that which i can on the game it allows me to th there wouldn't be any benefit for me it, 1080p is where i want to be sticking at if i went lower then it will give me that fps boost but then the game won't look as great i've got a decent pc i can run the game fine at 1080p so that's good for me now the other reses um you might be wondering why would you want to be going going 4x3, why 16x10? Now, 4x3, I'm mainly going to be talking about, um, you can use what I'm going to be talking about for 16x10, but, um, well, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to be talking about 4x3. So, with 4x3, what will essentially happen is when you pick that res, you're going to be getting black bars on this side of your screen. Now, this is because, um, before like widescreen monitors came out you used to have these square ones and then you would play 4x3 on those and you wouldn't get black bars because that was the size of the monitor. Now um, with what, what happens when you do play 4x3 is your field of view kind of decreases a little bit so everything seems a, a bit more closer to you. This can help with like aiming and stuff because um, I don't know maybe if you've got a larger monitor um, it might be hard to see people quite far away but if you play 4x3 they'll seem closer and aiming and whatnot will be easier. A lot of pros play 4x3 so I don't know if you want to take that into account, try it out, see what works for you. Now, one thing you can do when you are playing 4x3 is you can play stretch. Now, what stretched is, is it stretches out your screen so you get no black bars and it basically makes everything seem bigger as well because everything's stretched so your, the player models are stretched so aiming for the head will be a little bit easier because the head's bigger. Now, this just, it works but um, for me, I tried it out, I tried it out for like a week and stuff and it was working in the, in the sense that I could get headshots a little bit easier but my spray pattern and whatnot, it just didn't work and um, I, I'm now playing back at 69 1080p now i would recommend trying out 4x3 because it, it can work really well especially if you like orping and whatnot orping on 4x3 can work really well but um it, what happens is when you do play stretched it, it like alters your horizontal and um your vertical kind of sensitivity and stuff so what you have to put in your command um, in, in your console is m un, uh, underscore your 0 0.165 and then this will fix the sensitivity and stuff but still when you look around um, it will seem warped and stuff the floor and it, and it's, it's really weird but um, like I said it can help for orping so it's really just w w what you um, want to be doing now um, also when you do play black bars you will have the sides of your screens cut off so um, say you're on D2 at the back of the site and you're looking like straight down the middle so you could see window and um, um, 
tunnels on like 16 by 9 on 4 by 3 you won't be able to see them both so um you you just have to take that into account it, it won't really happen in most situations because um in most situations you don't want to be watching two angles but um in some places it will happen but i think the positives of 4 by 3 outweigh the negatives it's really just down to you trying it out seeing what works for you and um if it does then go for it if it doesn't then i'm um, stick to 16 by 9 Next up we have the audio and within these settings there isn't really much to do to talk about because um, practically everyone uses the kind of same settings. You have your um, normal default volume up kind of high but then everything else you want to keep low maybe even turned off like music and whatnot because you don't really need to hear the music in the game. Um, your 10 second warning volume though you want to keep that up because it will basically alert you when you have 10 seconds left of the round and this can help when you um, are like in a clutch situation whether you know whether you have enough time to defuse or not it, it can just help you out with things like that so i'm um, having that 10 second one it can help you out quite a lot but all the other things don't really give you any benefit within the game so i would um, recommend turning them all the way down now we can go on to the HUD, which is the heads-up display, what you see on screen, all the 2D stuff. You can change all this stuff from the menus, like the size, color, how much is there, and um, basically just mess around, see what you f what works for you, what you find is best. The color, it doesn't really matter because um, most of the stuff on the HUD, you don't really need to have like a, a bright green to know what's going on. I like to pick orange because orange is like my favorite color, so it, it really just de depends on um, what colors you like and what you want to try out. So just mix and match everything see what works see what doesn't and um, go with that now there are a few things which aren't in the menus which you can be changing um to, well a couple of things um th these you can be adding to your console command so one of them is cl underscore show pause space one and what this will do is essentially it shows you your speed now i've um I've shown this um, command in previous videos, but it just shows your speed. It's pretty cool to have um, if you're running about, you can see what speed you're running at, um, if you can go faster with different weapons and stuff. I still use it, even though I've been playing Counter-Strike for a fairly um, long time. Um, I should know the speeds of whatnot of different weapons, but I still like to have it just to get that reassurance. The um, next key bind is... Um, net underscore graph space one and uh, most of you out there probably use your net graph basically um the main things it shows you is your fps your ping and the tick rate of the server this is just useful information to know um especially the fps and ping just to see what's going on if you're getting lag you can determine whether it's fps or um or like ping lag and uh yeah that can just help out and um yeah that's about it um the, the um net graph will remain when you close the game so when you open it up it'll stay there but the um show pause space one won't so um if you do uh, want to keep that then you can bind it to like a key or you can put it in your auto exec file. Keybinds are the fourth thing we can look into changing and with keybinds you can do a whole range of different kind of things. You can set them to throwing nades or saying something random, just pretty much anything in general. They can make your keyboard become really efficient. Now to say something random is pretty easy, all you have to do is type bind space the key you want to bind um, space quotation marks, say space the word you want to say then end your quotation marks. So I'll have that on screen so um, don't worry if um, what I said didn't really make any sense but with that you can literally say anything you want, um, maybe you can have like gg um, well played or something so then at the end of the game you can just press a button it'll say that and you don't have to type it out it's pretty cool you can bind any anything you want to say that's pretty awesome moving away from um, those kind of fun binds you can actually um, go on to maximize your keyboard's efficiency so um, if you look at the keyboard when you're playing you're using like WASD but then the um backslash z x and c keys are down there and you might not be using them at all however your fingers are able to get to them and um, use them pretty easily so what i think is pr a pretty good idea is to bind um, each of those keys to the different grenade types and then if you get used to using them then it'll be easier to pull out the grenade grenades like that rather than using your scroll wheel or however else you um, like to pull out your grenades now for me i don't do this i i still use my scroll wheel i've gotten used to using it and um, i think having binds would just take a long time to to get used to using them and there would be no point because I'm, I'm all right with using the scroll wheel but if you are new to the game then maybe try out those the binds I which I do use are on my mouse I've got two side buttons and um, they both pretty much do the same thing the top side button um, is bound to I'm um, using mouse button one then Q and Q again this just makes it so when I AWP I can AWP and then I quick switch um, back to the AWP and it just makes it really easy because it does it in the quickest time possible compared to me pressing mouse button one and then Q and Q there'll be slight millisecond delays in between each of the things so um, by having it just bound to my mouse it makes it pretty quick and I can be really effective if you can think of any other binds which would be really helpful like that then leave them in the comments or if you think they're really OP and you want them just for yourself then you can leave them for yourself 
Moving on to the crosshair and view model, these two things are really big in your config. They, they, um, there's so much um, time you can spend changing each individual little parts of these, and um, just like how it looks and everything comes down to personal preference. It really just matters what you want, how you want to see it. There is no real right or wrong way of going about choosing one. However, the way I like to pick them is through the crashes maps on the workshop. I'll leave the links to these maps in the description. But basically, what it does, it puts you in a map, and uh, you can just shoot different buttons and whatnot to change how your um, view model and crosshair look, rather than using the actual um commands from your console you can use the commands in your console but then you'll have to learn them or just using these maps themselves makes it really easy as you just have to press um, buttons now let's start off with the crosshair um first the crosshair um, m most people prefer a static crosshair over a dynamic one a static one is one which doesn't move when you move and a dynamic one is one which does um there are some people that like to use a dynamic one i know um harry who's a, a kind of b hopper kind of player who plays a lot of nuke and whatnot he likes to use a moving one i used to like to use a moving one and there are other various players out there who like to use moving ones however um, the majority of um, players who have been playing for a, a good a fair amount of time like to use the static ones I, I think the main reason for this is the fact that um it, with a static one it doesn't move so it doesn't really distract you that's like I think what most people say a dynamic one because it's moving it could distract you and um, maybe you'll miss an enemy or something both have their benefits and really you should just try them out see what works for you tr um, just uh, see which one is uh, the best but however if you think they're both the same then go for a static one try and get to learn to use that one now for the color um, you probably want to go for one which isn't really on many maps and that will give you a lot of contrast the one which I like to use is that kind of lime green also I like to have a little black outline around the crosshair this just makes it um, visible in all kinds of situations and I'm able to see uh, what's going on and where now for the design it's totally up to you you can either just have a dot or you can have the lines or the lines with a dot a square just all different kind of um, uh, kind of designs uh, can be made and you just got to try it out see what works for you for me what I did was I went on dust 2 and um, on long I put a bot on one side and I was on the other and then I made the the gap of my crosshair fit just so it was on his head and then I've been using that ever since. Um, there is no real reason for this, I mean maybe it'll help with my headshots or whatnot but um, I don't know I just feel that it works for me so um, that's what I like to use. Remember I've left my config in the description so if you do want to um, have a look see what it's like um, it will be there. Now for my view model I have um, you can be it can be chosen the exact same way just a different map and um, basically you can see on the walls uh, different view models which are used by um, some of the like more well-known players out there um, you can just try out different ones which you uh, want to be using it doesn't really matter you can try playing with your left hand right hand um, having it more zoomed out or whatnot I my one is a, a kind of like a mid one not too mid but a bit more centered but it's quite um, it, it's pushed out a bit as well so um, you can see more of the weapon I just like it like that I guess I played a lot of um, COD 4 Pro mod and in that you ha had it played with a high um, FOV well not high but a fairly high FOV and, and it felt like quite um, pushed out the weapon and then I kind of replicated that in Counter-Strike because that's what I like but yeah it's just really um up to you what you want to be doing you can also implement binds into this so for example um when you press three to bring out your knife you could also bind that to um switch into your left hand so it brings the knife out in the left hand just little things like that you can mess around with see um cool things to be doing like that but um yeah that is about it for the view model and um, crosshairs the um, links will be in the description for those maps i was talking about so don't worry about that as well as my own config if you do like the way my game looks now onto the final part of the main config and arguably one of the hardest things to pick the sense now normally people like to go for a lower sense rather than a higher sense just um it helps with those precise movements however um i do know a few people that do like to play with a high sense which are pretty good so it, it just comes down to what you want to be doing but to find a sense which will be working for you what i think to do is start off um kind of low not too low maybe something which you're used to from other um games you've been playing first person shooters on your pc and just um play offline against bots with it and just see what's going on and then what you want to also try and do is um, find a wall somewhere that's kind of far away and then shoot a bit at it or find something which is unique on the wall like a poster and put your crosshair on it then move um, to the side and whatnot and try and keep your crosshair like locked on it as if you've got a sort of aimbot or something so you're locked on it and then this will help um, uh, you getting used to your uh, sensitivity or whatnot and um, yeah you're basically trying to track it 
Now, when you are trying to track it, if you're finding that you're like under aiming or over aiming, you can do different things to um, change your aim. Now, if you want to make your aim higher, what I like to do is um, play with a really high sensitivity, so maxing it up to, I don't know, like 20 or something, playing around, um, like playing for a bit like that, maybe half a game offline with bots, and then um, I like to switch it down, make it low, but not lower than my original sensitivity, which I was using. I make it a bit higher than that, and then I'll be used to that sensitivity, and I can get used to going around with that, and um, hopefully build out my muscle memory with it. And um, vice versa, if you want to go lower, then um, go really low, and then go up a little bit, and you can try and find you the right sensitivity for you. Now, mouse acceleration is something which is also an option within the sensitivity and whatnot, and it's something which I actually do play with. Um, whenever I tell people this, they are kind of surprised, because um, most people tell you to not play with mouse acceleration, but um, it's something which I've just been playing with and I've gotten used to. I mean, it works for me if I can't if I don't play with it, I just... Um, can't aim. I don't really know what it does to be honest, but um, it just works for me. So um, maybe try it out. See, try different values for it. See see if it works or see if it doesn't work. Um, it, it probably won't work to start off with because if you're used to not using it, it, it just won't work. But I don't know. Maybe there's like a few of you out there who turn it on and suddenly become an uber pro. So just try it out. And um, I'm not giving you any uh, like uh, true facts that it should work, but for me at least it does. Now that is about it for the config and uh, we can move on to actually getting used to the config. Now to get used to it, um the maps I like to play around with are Recoil Master and Aim Bots. Recoil Master is for when I've got a new res or new sense, and this is basically just to get my recoil back on track. I can learn the muscle memory that I need to learn, or I can learn what the muscle memory is for the recoil pattern of the, say, AK. That's like the um, main weapon I'm using, or the M4, but the M4's um, recoil isn't too hard to master. So, yeah, I'll probably go with the AK, and then I'll just um, practice quite a few sprays with that until I kind of understand what I'm doing, then I'll spray against different walls walls or whatnot with um, impacts on so I can see how my spread is and then after that I'll go on to aim bots to get my um, accuracy good and just aim for the heads try and get one um, one tap headshots and I'm um, just carry on like that and um, see what is working out DM DMing as well is always good uh, valve servers are nice or you can go on your community servers if you don't like the valve ones however valve ones are fine I be I like to use them I don't really see what what people don't like to use them and um, yeah you can just find out what you play best with and then uh, it'll probably take a week and a bit or, or maybe even longer to get used to the config but hopefully it should o improve your like whole performance overall now the thing is um you might find that some like for me personally I tried to play on a 4x3 res and um, for the I played for it with a week for a week and um, the thing which was working for me was I was able to aim for the head get headshots really easily and I thought it was improving my gameplay but but what was happening was with my spray it was just completely failing and I couldn't spray however like getting headshots at really long range was easy because I could see the heads they were bigger and whatnot now um, if this is the case and you find that your performance in game is dropping and you're just like hard getting hardly any kills you're not helping your team out at all you might want to reconsider the change I mean if it's just not working, it, it, it might be the case that it will never work and um, you should just go back to what you're used to. So um, I've gone back to 1080p, uh, the 19, 16 by 9 and I am playing pretty well and I'm back on track and I'm actually LEM now so I managed to rank up. But before then when I was playing 4x3 I was stuck at LE for like a really long time. So um, I'm glad I went back to 90, 16 by 9 I guess 4x3 was just not for me. But yeah, just leave in the comments what your config's like, how you found um, the different things, what you've got for your for your different parts. Maybe even leave your whole config in the description and people, other not in the description, in the comments and other people can find out what you use, see if it works for them and um, hopefully they can get the best config for themselves. But that is about it um, for this video on configs. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. I've been Rahul and I'll catch you on the next one.